we uh, begin and we'll just go around and do some uh, introductions and then I'll, I'll tell us a little bit about uh, our last best hope and we'll get going with, uh, with the game. Uh, my name is uh, Robbie. I go with the pronouns uh, he, him. Uh, I am uh, somebody who plays a lot of games by night, sometimes even in the morning like this morning. Uh, and by day, I'm a, a high school English teacher at a, at a Trinity Preparatory School, which is in uh, Winter Park, Florida, near Orlando. And uh, Lara, you want to go next? Uh, hello, I am Laura. Uh, I am finishing up my freshman year of college. Uh, I've been playing games for a little while now, uh, and I am daughter to uh, Robbie over there. Okay, and uh, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm Jonathan, uh, he and him, and I am a, a middle school science teacher at Windermere Preparatory School in Windermere, Florida also close to Orlando, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade science. Uh, I play a lot of, um, I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and Starfinder and Pathfinder. I also play a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering uh, card game. Uh, I've been doing that a lot more online, you know, since this whole thing happened. So, but I love this. Uh, thanks for inviting me again. Uh, okay. I love expanding my tabletop repertoire. Okay. And Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. I teach uh, he, him. I teach uh, American literature at uh, Cal Poly Pomona out in Los Angeles. I'm originally from New York and uh, I only started playing role playing games about two years ago, three years ago. Um, but I did play Magic the Gathering when I was in seventh and eighth grade. That is a true statement about my life. <laughs> Although it was banned, I think that that's what made us so edgy. <laughs> It was, it was those years where they were saying that it was satanic worship and I had gone to Catholic school. So anyway, that's my story. Okay. Um, all right. So um, today we are here to play uh, our last best hope, which is a game by Mark uh, Diaz uh, Truman, who runs a small, uh, I guess you'd call it an indie press called Magpie Games. Uh, this was uh, a game that was created in 2012. Uh, I was kind of looking at the introduction to the game. He wrote it as part of the what is called the Game Chef competition, which is an annual competition that's been running for a number of years uh, and, and has uh, come up with, you know, a number of kind of interesting game ideas that have come out of that. Also, it's been kind of a good springboard for a lot of, of game designers. We actually, a couple years ago, I had a group at, at Trinity Prep where we came together and furiously worked at, on a game that we submitted to the Game Chef competition. It is it is a furious competition though, because they they release um, the ingredients for a game that, that you have to incorporate a certain number of their ingredients. And you only get, I think, 30 days to to design the game. And so, you know, it, it requires some some pretty kind of quick committed work to to put that together. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, what I call the cats, the concept, aim, tone and subject matter of this game. Uh, and we'll also talk uh, a little bit about uh, safety. Um, so the, the concept of our last best hope is it's a game which is about a group of people who are coming together to solve a crisis. And uh, it is a game that, uh, you know, kind of defines whatever crisis it is. Crisis it, it is it, it is a, a very serious matter. And uh, the, uh, the game kind of encourages players to uh, make sacrifices that, that it, it, it may well turn out to be a slightly bloody game uh, and with some character deaths. But but what happens in the game is that that if a character makes a, a sacrifice, uh, that will end up uh, benefiting the group, right? So that the, the player knows that, oh, well, if my character kind of gives gives up their life here in the in the closing, uh, you know, conflict that 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 will actually perhaps be what what allows my group to kind of go over the finish line. Um, 
Yeah, so so the the aim of the game, I think, is to to kind of uh, uh, put the the characters into this kind of pressure cooker situation, and they the characters also kind of know that it's all riding on them, right? That like they are the ones that that need to be the ones to solve uh, the problem. Uh, the tone of the game, I think, veers towards a more kind of serious, uh, dramatic tone uh, with you know a lot of kind of climactic uh, encounters that have to be taken care of where, uh, and, and I think it, it tries to kind of make it something of a nail biter, right? As to whether the group is going to be successful or not. And in terms of subject matter, that that is something that uh, the group can decide partly determined by the play set that, that the group is using. And I have decided to go with uh, the zombie apocalypse mission, which is one of the the missions that's included in the the book. There's also an expansion book that has uh, other missions that are attached to that. Um, I do have on the uh, I have a Google drawing, which is our virtual tabletop that we'll be using. Uh, up in the upper right hand corner, I do have a place for lines and veils, and so if Right now, there is anything that you would like to put in there, uh, you are uh, invited to do so. A line, again, would be something where it's like, I do not want this to be part of the game uh, at all. And a veil would be something where you would say, okay, this could be mentioned in the game, but if it gets mentioned, we need to kind of pass over it quickly, or it maybe it's something that takes place um, off camera or you know off stage, uh, but it you know is something that would be okay to uh, have referenced in the game as long as it's you know we we're not we're not kind of drilling into that and exploring it. And then you know a couple other safety tools. The X card is always uh, available to us. So if there's something that is uh, going on in the game that is uh, making the game taking the game in a place that is not going to be fun for you and not going to be safe for you. Please uh, either say X card, put X card in the chat, or, or make the form of an X in front of you, and we will Im immediately pause and uh, rewind and then take a different direction. And and the other uh, kind of safety tool that we have is just the open table idea, where if if for whatever reason uh, you need to leave the table and stop playing, that is uh, perfectly fine. Okay. Um. um well, what's going to happen now? Okay, let, let me just uh, make sure that that everybody is aware with these these various story cards. Uh, you know what what happens is if during a scene you can play one of those cards. Okay, so like if if you have defined somebody as driving your character crazy, if you can put yourself or if you find yourself in a scene and uh, something happens where you know that person is driving you crazy, uh, you can play your card, give them to the supply officer, which is me, and, and you get uh, two additional story points, okay? Which as I say, during the threats, those story points uh, come into play. And so what he says is that, um, you know, that's the primary way that you get story points is by playing those cards. He says there is little to no benefit in waiting to turn them in. Uh, until later in the game. I mean, get your get your story story points early and and bank those right now. Now the story points. I mean, getting those you may want to to bank those, but you want to get them first. Okay, so and it says you know use your cards uh, early and often. And when you use those cards, uh, you only use them once. So you can't keep on like more scenes of the person driving me crazy over <laughs> over again. That right. it's not it just is one time thing. Um, one thing is is that the assets can be that they are not used for story points, but the assets come into play when we're resolving threats, and, and you can use the assets for multiple different scenes or even different roles within the same threat. Okay, um, so uh, we're going to start off then uh with can i ask a quick question yeah. before we so so we each have a secret and a fear from another player mm -hmm. how do how would we play those like for instance if if the um 
secret is that Dr. Buck Forster believes in strange government conspiracy theories. Like, my character wouldn't necessarily know that unless your character revealed that somehow. Um, well, yeah, so, so you either play it that I have revealed it or that you've got, you know, some knowledge of that, or you reveal something in such a way that, like, with that one, maybe you you kind of within a within a scene, maybe involving Dr. Buck, you mentioned some crazy government conspiracy, say, oh, those loonies who believe blah, 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 blah. Okay. And, and right, I, I could probably play it ran, then that like I would like enter in and, and kind of right, give you a reaction to suggest. So you, would, you would play that the card or, or I would or you would give me a reaction and then I would play the card because it's a correct, mindset. correct. That you, okay. that you've done something to kind of activate that. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we do start off with a the 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 plan has some uh, story points already in there, and and anybody can use those story points. And in addition, you already start off. Uh, you see next to your name. You all also have start off with two story points, but you you definitely want to accumulate more of those. Okay. So we're going to start off with a a scene um, where. Uh, and, and, and this should be a scene with the captain. So but why don't we say, um, and then after that, we'll have spotlight scenes and, the, and those just kind of move around the table uh, in a clockwise fashion, right? So, but, but the captain really, because you, you have to be uh, alerted to the complication. Um, and so it, it kind of makes sense to me since, uh, you know, I'm the one that, that ha had right the ability to choose the complication i will i will reveal to you the complication and you can kind of call the group together and we we would need to make a plan as to or a course of action as to how we're going to deal with this complication okay okay so um but wh where do we want this to be we i mean it could be um i mean we, we've been making our way to chicago but uh let, let's maybe just uh to do some scene framing let us say it is the morning and uh, we maybe have, have you know, we, we normally find like a campsite off the beaten track uh, where we can kind of sleep and uh, we're kind of getting up in the morning and um, and Officer Frank, uh, Dr. Buck, kind of jostles you awake and says, um, Frank uh, got some bad news, uh, got up early and trying to make uh, radio contact with groups in Chicago and the, the, the radio lines are dead. I mean, I, I can't, I've been trying my cell, I've been, you know, trying that, that crappy CB radio we picked up off the, off the 18 wheeler and I'm not getting anything from Chicago. Oh man, uh, so it's it's just we've 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 gone dark. Uh, we've been getting all of our orders from them. Um, let's uh, let's let's think about let's let's think about what what our next plan of action be. I mean, uh, I guess we should tell the folks and and uh, come up with a plan. Uh, I know that Doctor dr birdie over there she seems to think she always knows what's going on so uh maybe maybe she might be able to fill in some details and so i'll i'll uh is it so we're playing out a scene right now is that right so we're yeah we'll just kind of play out a scene and have a have a brief discussion as to what our what our course of action will be given the the right, silent so communication I, I will un uh i will gruffly say it. dr birdie wake up I think that Dr. Birdie probably throws something at you. <laughs> hey. She needs to rest. <laughs> hey. hey, this is this is serious. This is serious. <laughs> when is it not serious? Right, but you know those uh, folks in Chicago that we've been chatting with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They ain't talking no more. We ain't we ain't getting any communication from them. I think Dr. Birdie rolls over uh, to face you. And she says, "You serious?" Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what that's what 
that's what Buck over here says. And I kind of gesture to the communication devices. I said, I've been trying to do like the old Fonzie trick to it. And I kind of take my fist and I kind of pound on the, <laughs> on the radio a little bit. Stop! <laughs> Stop! What are you, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you, I, mean, I cannot believe happy days. <laughs> we've got this, we've got this equipment and if we lose it, it's, it's gone. You always do this type of thing. Stop. Calm right. down. Uh, well, you know, if, if that didn't work, and I, I'm going to kind of fiddle with it and see if it does, I was like, oh, maybe uh, maybe our engineer over here can uh, can have a whack at it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, you know, in there kind of, you know, you're fiddling with things still, and I'm, and I, I'm going to play my, my Officer Frank drives me crazy, right? This is like a type of thing that Officer Frank does. So um, I, I guess... You know what I will do. Um, I, I think with this, I could just black it out, or or change the color of it. Maybe I'll just um, uh, yeah, just do do like highlight in a different color to know that that's been used now. But but that gives me uh, two story points to use later. Okay. Yeah. So I and and I uh, after a little bit, I'm like, ah, oh, Buck, <laughs> you're so funny. But I guess. Uh... I guess I guess if you say stop, I'll uh, I'll I'll stop. But uh, what do you think, Naomi over there? Uh, is is Naomi? Uh, uh, what's Naomi? What's Naomi's pronouns? Uh, she, her. Okay. Uh, uh, why don't we see if, uh, uh, if if that techno wizard over there? If she has she has any ideas. G great idea. That's a great idea. Naomi, can you can you please come over here? Um, we've. Uh, Got a problem with, uh, I don't know, it's either a problem with our equipment or it's a problem with the people in Chicago because we're not getting any signal, cell phone, radio, or otherwise from Chicago. Hold on, hold on. Let me see what I, let me see what I have. Then I go digging through my backpack and I've got all my like various uh, materials from my courses that I was taking and I'm like trying to pull out like, uh, I'm a civil engineer, so this is not my, not my area, but you know, take some basic level, uh, some basic level stuff. I think she finds like a textbook that has like pictures of circuit boards on it. And so she's like flipping through it and trying to see if like what she's seeing on the, on this radio is what she sees. Uh, I, I don't, I mean, if I had time, I could probably, I, I, we could try to fix it, but I mean, can we just find another? Uh, I mean, I kind of gesture around. Uh, I think we're, we're we're fresh out. I don't see any stores around here that are open that would be selling one of these things. Ever since Radio Shack went out of business. Yeah. <laughs> um, if if you want me if you want me to do this, I'll. I mean, I can I can give it a shot, but I I can't promise I don't make it worse. Well, I mean. Uh... I don't know what do what do y'all think we should do? I mean, if it's already not working, can't can't be can't can't hurt to to do it again. If it messes up even more, well, then we'll just take it from there. Alternatively, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's nothing on wrong with it. Are you side. kidding me? It's not working. <laughs> well, it may not be working. However, it, 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 Chicago's might not be working, and we might just not be picking up any signals because there are none. I, I think I agree with Dr. Birdie. I mean, we don't know that it's broken. We just know that we're not hearing anything. If I if I break it, then we lose all communication, not just with Chicago, but with anybody else who might be surviving. I mean, we, I I don't feel comfortable with that with that responsibility. But you're you're in charge. If you if you tell me to do it, I'll do it. Wait, who's in charge? Me. I'm in. <laughs> uh, well, I you know I think. Uh, Naomi always says thinks she knows what she's doing, but I I don't I don't know uh, if she's really thought this one through. I mean, uh, if it's broken, then, uh, then then we can we at least do what we can do in our end and try to fix it, right? Right? <laughs> I kind of look around for for approval. Let's just let's just hear. And I grab out I grab a, a really uh, cool looking um, sword that I got. You know, on the internet a long time ago, before this all went down, it's like has plastic jewels in it and stuff. And I, I try to pry open the, the 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 front part of the radio. 
I think I'm swatting your arm away. Like, no, 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 no. I, I have, I have a screwdriver. We don't need to use swords. I, I flourish um, the sword, put it back into it. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Well, let's 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 get it done. Let's get it done. Uh, Naomi takes the radio, puts it on her bed, and starts like unloading everything that's in her backpack and uh, pulls out like. She's got a little screwdriver. She's got one of those little like circuit board kits that they use in like uh, electrical engineering 101 classes. And, and she starts like, she opens it up and she starts poking at it and she's looking for, you know, looking to see if circuits are broken. And um, yeah. Yeah. And Buck's over there, you know, looking over your shoulder saying, be careful, be careful. That, that stuff is delicate in there. We don't know how old this equipment is. Stop, stop. You know that are you are you yeah. sure you know what you're doing she goes uh we do know how old this equipment is and she looks on the back of the plastic cover of the radio and she's like 1998 <laughs> the last time we used these kinds of radios um well, well there, there you go isn't exactly it, true but <laughs> <laughs> there you go it, it, it's it's obviously very fragile and you know if, if this is actually still working we don't want to make it any worse like you know look at these the, the, these diagrams are are you sure that you know what you're doing in there i don't i don't think that uh you know these books are going to help you are they i mean this is this is like a, a de delicate surgery you're up to i told you that i don't know what i'm doing i also told you that this is, these are the risks that we run if you would like to do it surgeon you you may certainly do it I, you probably have a steadier hand than i do uh, but I'm I'm doing I'm doing the best that I can with the books that I got, and I'm only a, you know I'm I'm a senior. I, I don't I don't know how to do this. This isn't my field. I think we all, we all stretch. these days. <laughs> I need a smoke. Um. So how does how did the how does the scene? How do we work the scene? Do we, do we just do we spend story points to solve the problem? Do we? Well, this this one would not because this is not a threat per se. We're just trying to figure out what our course of action is going to be, and then uh, and then uh, at we'll 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 go into a, our first spotlight scene, and then a threat will happen at the end of that. One. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, so then, does it make sense for me to like add a complication here? Like, I need a part from that gas station over there that we saw down the road or yeah i mean i i think you could add add that that kind of information to the complication where you you know your your character would maybe figure out what what was needed what was needful for doing uh some type of of repair that would uh restore some complication i mean yeah. restore some uh you know functionality to this yeah um so naomi says I, I still can't tell whether or not this this mark right here means that the that the circuit is broken or uh, whether this and she's like pointing to different things in the in the little box. And she's like whether this wire is uh, needs to be replaced, but it's one of those two things. And I think that we can get them if we go to the uh, that gas station that we just passed. Um, but that's that's uh, that's as good as I can do. What what the hell will a g gas station with uh, ho hos and ding dongs do for uh, the equipment? What are, what are they? What are they? What are you going to shove in there? I mean, they the most most coffee. Uh, they'll they'll have a coffee pot or something that we can tear apart. There's usually uh, I don't know. There's uh, oh right 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 yeah no I, 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 do that, like, I do that uh yeah yeah that yeah, that makes sense uh yeah let uh let's go. All right, so, so we're we're gonna then uh, head off to you know, pack up and and head off to the to the gas station. Um, maybe we and and I, I'm assuming we're in. We're, we also drive in our electric car, so you know maybe we we we, we got to plug in there. And uh, you know, so yeah, Buck, Dr. Buck say yeah, we could probably kind of get make sure we're all kind of adequately juiced up for uh for the next uh, stretch. Onwards yeah. and upwards. Okay, so then uh, it, the 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 turn, you know, starting with the the captain, it moves to the left, which would be me, and I will set up a um, a spotlight scene, and 
Um, I think, uh, you know, we're in the car and uh, Officer Frank is driving with uh, Naomi uh, in the passenger seat in the front and uh, Bertie and uh, Dr. Buck are uh, in the back seat. And um, uh, so, so I'm going to start off with the conversation with between Dr. Buck and Bertie, but but obviously you're 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 you know you can be a, become involved if you if you want to. And uh, Dr. Buck turns to to Dr. Bertie and says, uh, Dr. Bertie, how did you sleep last night? Are you uh, are you feeling uh, rested and ready for another day? Well, I, I slept as well as one can can in this situation. Uh, my, 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 I am not as young as I once was. This body was not made for this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, intensity. Yeah, but I, I, I tell you what, I got up and I turned on, uh, our, you know, kind of got on my cell to see what was going on with that and it's working and, you know, got on the, the radio where we had been kind of occasionally picking up stuff, but this has me, this has me on edge. Uh, and, and I don't, you know, honestly, I don't know if, if it's the equipment. I, I have a feeling something, something's gone down in Chicago that's not good. Oh, no, I'm sure that something has gone down in Chicago. Something's going down everywhere. Uh but I don't think that our, our orders have changed. I think that we still need to get to Chicago. It's where all of the equipment I need is. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Birdie, do you really think you, you have what you will need uh, when we get there to, to turn the tide? Well, I, I, she, she lugs up her satchel. I, I really do. Uh, I, I think that I've, I've got all my hard candy here. That, that helps. The, the, the. the hell with your hard candy. You really think that that's going to save us? She says she has the cure, but she hasn't even given us any proof that, that it actually exists. And I'll play my... Like snack officer, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play my Birdie Blythe drives me... Can I do that? Play my Birdie Blythe drives me crazy? Is that enough? <laughs> yes. And I'm going to and I'm gonna play my, my Dr. Birdie Blythe keeps my character sane. Because I think, you know, Bert, Birdie, uh, I think... Uh, Dr. Buck respects uh, Dr. Birdie kind of as a kindred spirit. And with her saying, you know, how she really thinks that she's going to be able to pull something together there. I mean, that really is giving uh, Dr. Buck some some encouragement. So, yeah, if you'll just like highlight it once you you've used it, then uh, you can add uh, two more story points to your yeah. to your total. I think I think that Brady, uh, as this is all happening, she she uh, reaches into her bag and throws a handful of candies at Officer Frank and says, "Watch it, Frankie! No more candy for you." <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then I'll pick one off off the floor board and eat it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doc, Doctor Doctor Buck, right? You're you're a doctor. Uh, you you really believe in all this all this stuff she's selling? Uh, it don't make no sense to me. Well, I tell you, um, I've gotten to know Dr. Birdie a little bit and, uh, you know, I, I put my arm around Dr. Birdie and say, you know, she's, uh, she's got a sharp mind. I mean, we, we've had some conversations and I tell you, she, she has kept up with uh, the state of medical knowledge and she's taught me quite a bit about, uh, about viruses, viral infections. Uh, stuff that I I had no idea. Of. of course, I'm I'm usually out in you know rural Illinois, uh, you know, kicking around with uh, you know you know just nor your normal common cold and people scrapes and stuff like that. So what do I know about uh, about viral infections? But yeah, certainly I, I if if any if if there's anybody around here that knows some stuff that could turn the tide against uh, this infection, um, you know, doc, Dr. Birdie, uh, she has a, 
you know, a, a lifetime locked in that head. And I think, I think Dr. Birdie is like, yeah, I'm hip. I'm cool. Uh, and I, I think that her confidence has been restored by, by Dr. Dr. Buck's words. I mean, she's used to everybody kind of like, uh, being like, uh, kind of poo-pooing her. <laughs> she's, but, uh, Dr. Buck has, uh, has reminded her that she can do it. Okay, so are you gonna spend your uh, your card? Okay. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, we're driving. This conversation's going on, and a, uh, just blur of just a blur of fur just darts out right in front of the car. Uh, if I'm driving. Uh, you know, oh shit, and I swerve and it goes off into the to the ditch and I'm just like, oh, freaking deer, man. Uh, and we get out and we notice that there is a kind of a small herd, I would say, are uh, kind of half circling us of deer and they're all just staring at us. Yeah, and, and, and uh, okay, so let me explain how, how this is going to go down. Uh, th th this is going to result, we, th this will be a problem that we have to overcome now. Like these are zombie deer and they are, you know, we got to get our, our, our car out, but I think it, it, it becomes apparent we have to deal with the deer first because they're not going to just sit idly by. <laughs> we know, we know the look in those eyes, right? As you know, yeah. we've encountered zombies before. Or can I, can I retcon it and that like we hit the deer swerved off and then the, can, deer, yeah. the deer, the, the or, deer gets up and then we see a bunch more behind it. Yeah. See, a, see a bunch more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just had this cool image in my head. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so we've got this kind of like uh, injured deer that's kind of like probably kind of uh, you know really right has this unusual gait now because of the injury that it sustained, but it's up again, and and now his deer zombie buddies are are kind of joining in. Um, so if you go to the cheat sheet, the way we resolve the threat is. Um, it starts at uh, at level three, which means, and I'll keep track of the dice, and then we'll we'll kind of roll these two pools of dice. So in Act One, we start with three black dice, and um, somebody, and it does not need to be the spotlight person. This could be anybody, uh, kind of the the person, and a lot of times it's the situation, like who who would be the one to really be up on the front line, helping us deal with the threat. So one person is going to need to step up and be the one to take the threat. I, I, and I, I think probably when I, if I saw the deer, I would probably be, I think I would be looking for the officer, right? As, I mean, this seems like a, um, <laughs> a <Wow>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I will grip, I'll, I have my sword always strapped to my back, my kind of fake samurai looking sword. <laughs> <laughs> and I grip it and I say, I've hit a lot of deer and that one should be dead. Uh, and I'll, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll take the. Okay. So if you, if you take the threat, uh, that gives us one white die. Another a character can for free say, I will join in the fray as well. And that would add one white die. And, and it's free. Uh, the, the, the one thing uh, that, that I think does become a consideration here is if during the, the die roll uh, uh, harm is indicated, if, if the black dice come out higher than our die, uh, harm will be inflicted and anybody who has joined in the fray gets the harm, okay? Okay. But does does anybody else want to like step up to help, officer? Yeah, I think Naomi's a bit reckless. All right, so so Naomi is now engaged in this as well. Um, now additional characters, uh, if uh, you know, Doctor Buck wants to step in. Or, or Dr. Birdie wants to step in, they can as well, and uh, they would add a die. Um, I, I think uh, Dr. Buck would probably say, Dr. Birdie, this is not uh, not something you should become involved in. Yeah, I, I think that um, 
I think at best Dr. Birdie would maybe be able to impart some knowledge as to like how maybe the these animals would be able to uh, give the virus to you guys, but I don't think physically Dr. Birdie would be very helpful in this fight. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think um, now I can I can join now um, for the additional characters. They can join, but they have to spend a story point to do it. Um, um, but I, I think uh, Buck, I mean, and, you know, he's he's a backwoods hunter. Uh, so, you know, I think he, he'll go on and uh, join. And so then that means I will have to, to use one of my story points to do that. Okay. And then... Um, anybody who is, who has entered the fray can, uh, invoke their role ability. Okay. So, uh, this is on your, your little, uh, card. So, uh, like mine would not come into play because nobody has harm, but like if I spent a story point and somebody had harm, that would allow them to ignore, you know, to ignore, uh, their harm dice. Okay, uh, you know, officer, uh, um, officer Frank, if you want to spend a story point, um, the, uh, if you're trying to inflict damage on a threat, that that would come into play here. If you wanted to to spend a story point to invoke that, uh, you could. Right. So, so can yeah. I ask a question about the threat, real quick? Sorry. Mm -hmm. So if the threat is getting past these uh, zombie deer but also getting the car out of the ditch. Do we have to face the one before facing the other, or can we do them simultaneously? I, I think I this, is, this is all one threat, I think, right? It's all kind of just right now considered a singular thing. In which case, can I suggest that the way that I contribute here, my role ability is to spend a story point to add one white die when facing technical threats. Mm -hmm. As a civil engineer, maybe I'm trying to get this car out of the ditch. Mm -hmm. um, whilst yep. others distract the zombie deer. Yep, you can do that. Distract, you mean chop off their heads. Sorry. Yeah, I, so. I believe in you. I don't believe in you. <laughs> right, so, so you, you, you spend a story point for that, but yeah, we get another uh, white uh, dice there. Uh, you are allowed, if you want to, and want to spend a story point, um, you can... Uh, use one asset for a role. Okay. Uh... And, and I should explain like how this works. Our, our, our goal is, okay, so in act one, it's a, it's a threat level of three, right? They start with the three, um, the three dice. Uh, and so we, we have to get rid of the, the, those three threat levels. If when we roll these pools of dice, if our number is higher, uh, that would knock it down one level. If it's five higher, that would add an, an additional level that we get to knock it down. And if it's 10 higher, that would be a full three that we, we would be knocking it down. Okay, so it works and you, you get like bonus knockdown levels for every increment of five over. Okay. And the same kind of works, but with respect to harm, if the black is higher, anybody engaged in this gets one harm. If the black happens to be five higher, we would all actually get two harm. And if it was 10 higher, we would get, we would get three harm. Gotcha. And, and we do also have the, the story points in the plan that can be used as well. Right. So should we like go around, take turns saying like how we're adding dice to the pool kind of a thing yeah i mean that's what we're, we're just yeah trying to kind of build up our pool right now yeah um but you know i think um you know i i think uh i'll, I'll go on and use one of our assets that seems worthwhile uh so uh, and i'll do that with with one of the plan points uh so take that down to seven and i uh, you know i just say that it uh, you know dr Dr. Buck kind of notices the 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 knives in there and he's kind of 
picked out one that he knows is particularly uh, worthy of. It's it, it is ornate, but it, it's it's also a very serviceable knife. Reminds him of those old Bowie knives that he used in his youth when he was like trampling around the backwoods, right? So so that gives us uh, another white uh, dice to use, and we're only allowed to use one asset um, Her for this roll. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are there any other things that people want to do before we do the roll? Because we, we now have what one, two, three, four, five white die. Right. And we could say, I mean, right. Frank has his role ability is to add a story point, uh, spend a story point to add one white die. We're trying to inflict damage. So yeah. Do you, do you want to do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take one story point off of. Uh, I'll take you down to three then for that. All right, so now that gives us another one. So we have six white dice to roll. So we want to go with that. And uh, all right, and then I'll go <coughs> into the roll for your party. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to go on and clear all of these. And... Um, so I'm going to roll six white, down to the white, and six, and sit that. Oops, wait, I, I, I did the wrong, <laughs> <laughs> I did the wrong set of dice. We don't want to roll eight-sided. Um, all right, here we go. Six of these. And then uh, they have three black, which we're going to make red. So three of the red. Um, so um, it looks like five. So ten. If if I'm do I have I counted that correctly? We are ten over what they yeah. had. Yeah. Which is perfect. I mean, th right, that, that is exactly what we would need. If, if we don't get that, you have to do another round of the rolls. <laughs> right. So, so knocking, knocking them out uh, right out of the gate is, is pretty good. Um, we, we decimate this deer herd. Yeah. So, you know, I, I imagine it's like a combination of, of you know, um, you know, we are, you know, able to, uh, extricate the car th thanks to Naomi kind of working away there we're able to like decimate the deer at least sufficiently that we're able to kind of get ourselves uh, back in that in the car we maybe are, are fearful that there are additional deer out there in the forest right but we are we're able to kind of get get ourselves uh, out of this and then what what happens is uh, we kind of make our way down the road, and uh, Naomi, uh, you now get your spotlight scene. And since I was the one that resolved that threat, I, I'm going to be uh, adding a new threat to our threat pool. So I'll, I'll just erase the, the one that we have in there right now that we've dealt with, and I'm going to add another card there. But you can uh, go on while I'm doing that, go on and, and go to the next spotlight scene. So I'm guessing, uh, I think that the next spotlight scene is probably our arrival at the gas station uh, and trying to find, uh, trying to find these, the, the parts that we need and put this all together. I think maybe we're just trying to do it all here. Does that seem, is that doing too much or? No, I, I think that that's. No, I think that sounds reasonable. Uh, in which case, I think I am going to need um, Buck because as much as Buck pisses me off, um, I do think that his stand, his hands are steadier than mine. And so um, when trying to like fiddle with this, I, I, I feel like I'm going to be directing him as opposed to doing it myself. I'll stand guard, and I'll just I'll hang out outside and just keep an eye on. 
I think I'm gonna be looking at the, the the various things that are happening, like with the the, the electrical stuff. I'm kind of it's a, it's a side hobby of mine, we'll say. Nice. I think Naomi is very excited about that because Naomi adores you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just uh, adding another threat here. Um, and then uh, it is, um, who did we say gets the, gets to choose the next threat during the scene? It's the it's the people involved, or it was the it was the person involved and everyone's involved. You said the captain, right? Okay. Um, all right. So um, you, you, I'm sitting down there. Doctor Buck is sitting down, and uh, I'm a little wary of 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 doing this. It, and I'm I'm kind of questioning um, I'm questioning Naomi, saying Naomi, are are you sure? You know, you're telling me about how to reroute this circuitry, and I know a little bit about you know electronics. Some of this stuff just doesn't seem right to me. You don't need to understand the electronics. You just need to clip this wire and attach this wire. She hands you a little a short little piece of just like surgery, doc. Wire. Um, Isn't that how tendons are attached or something? Uh, all right, I'll I'll do what you say. I I, I but I, I don't know. I, I I um, you know, my background kind of. Uh, I don't know that I'm I'm quite up to this, but I, I'll I'll do what you say. Um, doc, here it goes. Doc, none of our backgrounds matter. Do this, and I'm gonna hear invoke that you drive me crazy. <laughs> Okay, and I'm I'm kind of going in there and uh, yeah, so and you you get your two story points and go on and uh, take the uh, you know, the one you can highlight. But you know, Doctor Buck kind of goes in there and and is I'm sweating, I'm sweating. You see, you know, the perspiration. Uh, so I, I'm a lot more confident when you know I'm working on uh, a body, but uh, you know, this is kind of uh, detail work and I, I know like with the soldering that's in here it's tough tough going um but uh i i think i think i'm uh, this looks right does does it look like i'm doing a good job here and naomi's like literally got her chin on your shoulder and and it's like pointing to things over your shoulder um yeah no you're doing it right look you're, you're doing just fine you're, you're you're great now now connect this over here and then she hands you like uh, a little, um, like an alcohol, uh, a Q-tip dipped in uh, something. She's like, now clean off that, clean that off right there. All right. And so I, I kind of start doing that. While I'm, I'm progressing, I, I say, uh, so tell me, uh, Naomi, what, what were you up to before all of this, before all of this started? I was uh, I was taking some classes, uh, studying abroad uh, for the semester, and um, really enjoying my classes. It was the last chance that I had to to do this before I graduated, and uh, thought it would be a great opportunity. And it turns out that uh, it was a great opportunity to survive, I guess. But in all other ways, uh, I should hit the fan, and um, you know, and now we're all here, aren't we? What were you doing before all this? Well, I I was um, I was just uh, kind of on uh, kind of on vacation. Um, yeah, uh, I was just kind of out in the out in the woods. Uh, kind of, I, I go on hunting trips. That's kind of the thing that kind of takes my mind uh, takes my mind off of things. But you know, where where did you say you came from before all this happened? Originally, or where was I studying abroad? Yeah, where, tell me about that. You're studying abroad. Uh, I was in Mexico City. That's kind of a, a little hike from here. Um, how are things down in Mexico City? Uh, nowadays, not, not so good. Uh, back then, it was beautiful. It was packed, but it was 
it was beautiful. Now it's packed and horrendous. Yeah, and and what happened? I mean, it doesn't seem like that's really where the zombies started. I wouldn't expect them to kind of be making their way all the way down to Mexico. Uh, Naomi, like, sort of, like, uh, she sort of, like, backs away from you a little bit as you're working on this, and she's like, <clears throat> who knows where these zombies came from, and who knows how they got in, or how they, you know, how they appeared all around the world. I, I don't, I'm not an epidemiologist. I, I build bridges with straws. I'm a fucking senior in college. Like, this is a civil engineer. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't know. Just, just clean, just swab the, swab the circuit, and, and let's get out of here. But Buck stands up. He stops. Storm off. He stops swabbing and, and and kind of goes after you. He says, "I didn't mean anything by it. Why are you having such a such a reaction to that? I was just, you know, making some small talk. What was that nerve just, that I hit? I'm just hangry." And she picks up some like uh, some Twinkies because they will survive. And uh, she throws them at you and then pulls up another pack and or opens them for herself. Okay. I, I just heard a Twinkie hit the ground. Is there any extra? <laughs> Yep. She picks up another one and just throws it at the door in the general direction of your voice. Thanks. <laughs> Figure it out. Eat it. I think Birdie is just like, oh, youth these days don't respect their elders. When an elder asks you a question, you answer it. Uh -oh. And I think I'm going to play my annoyance with uh, my, my card. Yeah, and I, I'm going to play my, my Naomi secret uh, that... that Right. Clearly, this reaction is something to do with uh, being responsible for what happened in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. Um, and then, in terms of of the who's going to play the threat card for this scene? It's going to be the captain again, or or I mean, I also. Uh, Dr. Birdie's a little on the periphery, although you 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 did you did collect your story point, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jonathan, you want to play the thread again? Uh, yeah. Do we want to do we want to get out of here and have a thread happen, or do we do we want to have it ha happening while we're in this while we're in this gas station? I think to some extent that's up to you. Um, okay. Where you want it to happen? Well, I, I guess um, I guess. Frank will say, you know, as cool as it is to like start shouting and being really loud in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, maybe we can like wrap this up and uh, uh, get on get on the road. Because um, I'm thinking like, like maybe we can work on work on this in the car or something. I just don't think hanging around here with a bunch of you know zombie deer is, is maybe the best idea. Uh, and maybe maybe we get in the car and try to start working on it. Uh, do we need to? To figure out if we're successful at, at redoing this, is that something the spotlight person would, would come up with? Or like, how do we? Yeah, I, I think with that complication, my sense of it is that, right, communication is still not, it's not working. restored, right? And, and But maybe there is a sense that it, it may not be the equipment at all, right? That this, um, you know, I, I, I trust that Naomi know, knows something about putting putting the the this together again and is able to kind of do some diagnostics and yeah we may be it could have been a combination of both right i mean it may be the, the equipment isn't really operating but it may be operating better now but we're still having trouble kind of getting people uh in chicago to communicate okay um uh, so okay, i'm kind of looking at i'm kind of looking at the time and if we want to get to chicago so maybe uh, like real time in real life time. <laughs> um, oh, and, and, and what, one thing I forgot to do. Let me just go back here real quick. Um, yeah. Okay. On, on one last thing, there are all these like little pieces of this game. Anytime it we, we are we roll a six in a threat, mm -hmm. um, things get added to that pool, um, to the event pool. Um, a six translates, well, and actually it's, it's not going to matter uh, the way that this, that this goes out, but uh, a six, like a red six or a black six, uh, gets translated into two, um, two dice, two black dice to the event pool. Ooh. 
And, and but R6, we can translate into two dice, two white dice to the event pool by spending three three story points, which I think would be a worthwhile thing to do. So it, it's not going to, it's going to take, and what happens is both of those six actually would, would not be considered in the total for the roll. But as I say, that this ends up, you know, since, you know, it's not going to change the, the fact that we were 10 over theirs uh, anyway. So that is the way that that works. So okay. um, I, I will re remove three story points from the plan, I guess, and then, um, there and then we're up to uh, six black and uh, two white for the event pool. And once the, the total in that event pool is at 12, that brings Act 1 to an end. Oh, once the total is, is 12. Okay. Yeah. So we're up to eight right now in there. Okay. Um. Okay, so I, I'm thinking maybe just in the interest of time, we 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 still don't hear any contact. Now I, I would I would say, well, I mean, we were headed to Chicago anyway, shouldn't we just keep on going there? I agree. Our, our orders are the same. Yeah, and and our, we know what our what our final destination needs to be. We got to get uh, Doctor Birdie into the lab. I mean, yeah, I guess, or 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 we. Uh... We we know that that maybe some uh, some real doctors or or real scientists are there working. They might actually have a, like an actual plan. Real? What do you mean <laughs> real scientists? <laughs> <laughs> ah, never mind. All right, let's let's go. And the the threat as we're as we're driving, I'm gonna do the uh, the ma militia group. We're gonna run into um, run into this militia group as we're trying as we're getting close to the Chicago city limits. Are they like a roadblock situation or? Yeah, I wonder if they're like a militia group or they're just like, uh, I don't know, like band, like basically like bandits now. Yeah. That, I, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I had in mind was it's like, yeah, just a makeshift uh, militia group. But yeah, probably kind of rather shady, sketchy in all sorts of ways. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So also, it kind of it maybe just takes us by surprise. Like a there's some uh, some miscellaneous just clutter on the road um, that we would have to get out to move. And maybe as we we get out, we realize that we're being ambushed. Kind of a thing. All right. So uh, we can decide who's gonna. We're pulling up there. Who, who are we gonna have? as the point person taking on the threat here. Uh, they, they seem to have us way outgunned. Uh, I'm thinking we might want to try to, you know, talk our way, get someone who's uh, who's smart to talk to these folks, maybe get them off our back. Uh, I nominate uh, my good friend, Dr. Buck Forrester. <sighs> oh, uh, you want me to take... Uh... The lead on this, uh, that um, I can try. I mean, may maybe maybe if, if me or one of us can can like occupy them. I mean, maybe we maybe we kind of just keep the car back here, and the others can kind of skirt around a little bit. Maybe we, maybe we can rely on a little uh, indirection here and and stealth to kind of get by them. I don't think we're going to take him down. Yeah, Doctor Buck, that, that is a great idea. Do you do you want me to 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 be your muscle during this when you're talking, or you want me to sneak with the other folks? I'm wondering if we put up a kind of like weaker front that they'll maybe take a pity on us. We're not going to have like these these older folk. We're going to die soon anyway. They're they're not. We're not going to have much on us, right? I mean, I got my back full of sweet knives, but I guess. Yeah, why don't that sounds you know, uh, Dr. Verde, I can't imagine that they would that they would that they would go after you, but maybe if if we send you up there and, and we can have uh, you know, we, we could have Officer Frank backing you up. He has lots of uh, lots of law enforcement and combat experience. I know, you know, uh, that could probably come into play for us if things get a little dicey. Am I to understand then that your plan is to send our last best hope 
out to face a bunch of militia with a mall cop to protect him. <laughs> is that your plan? Listen, are you you're you're questioning Doc Doctor Buck is the reason why we've made it this far. Uh, and I'll I'll play my can I play my uh, my I like Doctor Buck for or Doc Doctor Buck Forrester keeps me sane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I I I trust his judgment. I'd go to hell and back for this guy. I would also like to play. I'm not sure if this is an appropriate play of this. Uh, Dr. Buck's fear of being the one making life or death. Yeah, I, I was definitely. Yeah. I take that back. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that definitely. I was, I was thinking about that when I was like uh, getting my nervous habit on. Yeah. 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 So you can go on. And I'm, and I'm definitely poking at that. Yeah. So that takes you up to another two on the story points, and then yeah, just highlight your card there. Um, all right, so so. Dr. Buck, I, you know, says I. Okay, I'll I'll do this. Uh, and uh, is Officer Frank coming with me? I mean, I'm I'm by your side if you want me to. All I'll right, grab so, two swords, double swords, just to yeah. look intimidating. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'll take uh, I'll take the point on this one, uh, and um, and then. Uh, Officer Frank's coming with me, so you get you get a one white for free on this. Um, I uh, I think um, go through the different things. I mean, I am thinking, you know, definitely using an asset um, uh, I, I think I'm going to try to use that zombie mace uh, spray repellent um, either as a bargaining chip, like if we needed to kind of say, oh, we have something uh, we have something that might be helpful to you if you take it easy on us and kind of let us go through. We could kind of give them some information or or if things turn nasty, you know, it becomes another, you know, asset I could use as a. It's probably not too bad on humans either, right? Uh, it probably has some some type of, of stinging property. So I'm going to spend a, a story point to use the asset. A, asset. And uh, and who's the spotlight? Who's going to set the scene or like maybe play the role of the? Well, I, I'm the one who's taking the threat, right? Okay. Right. So. Yeah. You know, this is this is a little different than the the spotlight scene, right? Where th this is kind of oh, right. what wraps up the spotlight scene is the threat, but oh, okay. I'm the one taking the threat right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so other ways we can add, um, you know, if Officer Frank wants to use uh, a story point, he can he can use his role. Um, I guess suggesting well, well, that are we are we going to try to we're going to try to kill these guys or um i think we're, we're you know i i think you know what bucks is i think we got to delay them but look these guys i something something may go down that we need we need some muscle to kind of for us to escape with our you know with our lives in this whole thing i mean not, uh, not everybody's not everybody needs to be killed in this situation okay I, I mean, yeah. I, well, I just looking at looking at the one side versus the other. I mean, uh, you know, I hate to to say it, but they they got us. I, they got us outgunned. I don't know what these. I don't know what. But I, I'm 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 at your side. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's this? It says use a touchstone. So yeah, and you can yeah. Also, yeah, think. we should look at those too to see. Those are what you left behind and what you. Right. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a way to do this without. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I could use my my touchstone. Um, um, yeah, and what does that do? That using the touchstone gives you one. Gives you a story thing if you gives you a story point if you use it. Is that what it says? Yeah. So I'm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it, it it well, it actually just gives you a a, a white, um, 
but but it's a it's a it's a one use thing. But you know, I I think what what um, what I could do is bring my my old doctor bag with it and go with the sympathy route and say, look, uh, we know of the there there are are some some people in uh, Chicago. In fact, uh, I'll say uh, that there's there's a woman who is. Uh, gonna be in labor any day now, and uh, I'm a I'm a doctor. They called me desperate, right? I, I heard it on the radio that they were they were desperately needing somebody who would be able to help because they uh, she's had some complications, and I need to kind of get in there and help out with uh, with this delivery. And I'll show them, right? I'll have the bag to to show them, so that'll give me a uh, a white. And, and with the touchstone, um, you don't have to use the story point for it. You just kind of invoke it, but then that's the only use that you get out of your touchstone for the game. Right, right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how, of what Frank could do to offer up a white dice. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out something he could do. Uh, looking at my, your your ludicrously flamboyant samurai sword. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it. I can I can I get it. up there and I can just I could be intimidating and just just uh, I know <laughs> I know move for move a lot of uh, lightsaber scenes from Star Wars, so I can just like. <laughs> can I? Uh, so uh, if someone else is taking the threat, you can use your ability. My ability is uh, to um, technical uh, negotiate technical threats. Can I make a? Can I make this radio that we just fixed? Like, do a massive feedback, uh, like a blurring feedback to distract or disorient uh, our our foes. Uh, yeah, so you story guy at a. Yeah, and, and it, it will uh, it will require you because you you haven't yet uh, you're not uh, yet in the in the conflict with the threat, but you can spend one story point to enter, adding a, a die, and then once you're in, you can activate your role as well if you want to do that. Okay, yeah. so we can only yeah. activate our role or like our ability when we're in the conflict. Correct. When you okay. you've also kind of engaged yourself in the conflict. All right, but that that gives us two more. Um, How many are we at? We're still in the car. Uh, we're we're at six now. Yeah. So I yeah. So that's what I'll I'll use my assets. Say, don't mess with us and just <laughs> with the sword. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So so that gives us. Uh, uh, now are are you are you using the samurai sword for this, or are you just kind of showing it off for right now and saying? I'm, I'm showing it off right now, assuming we're not yeah. trying to like. Correct. Yeah, so I, I, I think with six, hopefully that will that will do it for us. I think that we're, um, yeah. So so we're offering we're offering. Oh, we're saying there's this there's a person that's in need and trying to get past. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm ready to throw up a distraction if you need it. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to think of like who who should be rolling because I rolled the die last time because I was the spotlight, right? Is that right? That I, I, th I yeah, I'm I, I think so. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Oh, why don't we have do a spotlight again. person? Why, you know, um, Aaron, if you want to we'll clear the thing, and so we're gonna roll three red and six, uh, six white. Uh, which is the same, right? So I can just you can just select all of them and re-roll them, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks really good. <laughs> For us, yeah. Um, yeah. That th this obviously is going to uh, deal with the threat, and well, and, and we can now. Here, here's the thing. So we have a six. And we can we can add add that as a die to our uh, event pool, but then that gets removed from the table. Um, and it's still so, fifteen to five. Um, 
Correct. So we, it, it, it would still do it. So, but I, I think we should use the three uh, story points um, and that will add another to the event pool. So we'll take it up to, to um, yeah. Uh, and let me just double check on, because I think, you know, it seems like a lot of we're adding to the story points. Pool. Yeah. These are just what we're rolling for for this particular threat event. Is that right? Correct. But, but at the end of Act One, we 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 roll the dice in the event pool, right? And that's going to determine the outcome of Act One. Okay. Yeah. Um. And I think we may. Let me just see. Rolling the dice. So. Now where does it go? Rolling the event pool, adding dice. So here it is. Any white sixes that come up during the roll in Act 1 or Act 2, the players may add them to the event pool, pool by paying three-story dice. Um, uh, only one white six can be moved to the event pool per roll, but multiple white sixes can be moved over the course. Yeah. So uh, take me back here. So when um, with the black dice, did... did um, And this is like another complication. So any black sixes that came up, which which happened in that first conflict, uh, uh, the supply officer moves one black die to the event pool and pays the player who rolled the black six two story points. And we didn't do that, did we? I, I should be getting uh, yeah. two story points. And, and did I did I put one black die in there or two when I did that? I think I did two, right? Mm -hmm. it should just be one, right? So and then that gives me two story points more there's a lot of little like yeah i guess I'm, I'm a little confused as how do the event pool works and where these dice all right so what happens is is like every time we're in a threat and if black rolls a six uh it will take that dice out of the roll it'll take that six six roll out of consideration for the threat roll and instead it gets moved to the event pool okay and, and the event pool just starts to accumulate until we end up having 12 in that event pool. And is that and, the only way dice can be added to the event pool? Is if That is the three? only way, is, is through the rolls of sixes, right? Okay. So, and they are kind of costly for us because we roll a six and we have to spend three story points, right? To get it, yeah. And to and to, get to it kind of there. put it in there. So they've but, rolled five sixes, or no? They started off with oh, they start off with four. Oh, you start with a certain number. Got it. Okay, that's yeah. Okay. You start off with four black, so you're already kind of in the hole. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Um, I yeah. see. Okay. Do I have the, do I have the black count right? Because they started with four. Um, with my first roll, did they have two two sixes or just one six that they had in there? I think they had, they had they one, had, they had one. Had two. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is correct then. Yeah. We rolled right. two black sixes when we were trying to deal with complications. Oh, that's the, right. At right. the outset. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that that does successfully deal with the the threat for us. So uh, I think a combination of our you know kind of distracting. Uh, the people, the the sad story that I have kind of given them, and and some radio interference that also kind of ends up kind of creating problems for them. We are able to uh, clearly we're not kind of defeating them in battle, but we're we're able to kind of squeak our way through through that situation. Um, yeah. So. Um, Laura, it goes yeah. to you now for the next um, for the All next right. spotlight scene. Awesome. Um, so I'm just setting the next scene, correct? Like that's what the spotlight scene is. Correct. And you want to kind of look at at your unplayed cards to do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I think that the next scene is we are now in the city of Chicago. And I think we're creeping our way towards the University of Chicago. Um, 
And I, I, I mean, I think that the, the, we're trying to go fairly undetected right now. Um, and so we're just kind of trying to stealth our way into the university. Okay. I'll say, I'll say everybody take one of these and I pass out my knives just in case. Dr. Buck takes the one that, that he used against the zombie deer and uh, yeah. Um, and you got that spray, right? Yeah, I got I got the spray. And uh, you know, as this goes on, uh, Jonathan, we why don't you go on and uh, I don't know that we need to necessarily put another thread out there. At some right, point, yeah, we will. But if you want to look at, at one that would uh, would apply here, so uh, we're, we're on the we're we're up at the University of Chicago. The we're getting near the campus now. Yeah, I think so. I think we need to find our way to get in. Um, um, Doctor Birdie, do you know where? where we're going do you know where do you know your way around the campus here yeah uh i've, I've done a couple of lectures here um but yeah I, I know generally where the research labs are uh follow me and uh i think she takes uh something out of her her satchel uh probably some kind of little explosive thing that she can throw uh, Oh, you're full of surprises, Dr. Birdie. I, I never thought that you'd be carrying some something like that around with you. Uh, of course, she, she's, she's just a badass, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, D Dr. Birdie, um, I think we're getting kind of close here. You, uh, I, I would start kind of. Uh, accessing those those memory banks in your mind to make sure that you understand what what we may need to do or what you need to do uh this situation when we get yeah. in that lab uh so the, the the research building is on the north side of campus so we're gonna have to trek on up there uh when we get there there's a lot of security and stuff we might need to like uh mess with some security systems so that we can actually get in and access this stuff yeah well uh, officer frank you should be able to help out with security i mean you're you're you've got that kind of background don't you oh uh, yes yeah, such an extensive background right I, I i yeah i mean you've seen my moves i i've been highly trained and uh yeah that's that's i abs absolutely I, I think exactly. that Alberti uh, kind of pinches your cheeks. Yes, we've seen you with your samurai sword, darling. Listen, listen, what are you? Stop! Don't don't you condescend me, you old hag. Uh, and I <laughs> and I and I break up. I, I break off, and, and it kind of touches a nerve a little bit. And uh, and I'll say, I, I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can bear it anymore. I I I. I, I've never actually been trained in any kind of combat. All my moves are from from TV shows and movies and stuff. I've only I was only working, I was only working for for three days as the mall as a mall cop before all this went down. I I don't know what's going on. I'm scared. I think Bertie. Oh, Frankie. She pulls out some of her candy. <laughs> Will this make you feel better? No, it won't make me feel better. And I smack the candy out of her hand. Uh, yeah. And I, I think said, Naomi. Well, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, go. I was just gonna say I was. Gonna, I kind of march off to sulk by myself. I think Naomi goes after you and and says, "You, you got us across. You got us across the country. I don't care how long you were a mall cop. You, you, you proved yourself, and uh, I want you to know that I've given you shit, but you, you, you did right by us." Well, and I walk away. That that means a lot. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, and Laura, you 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 played the Frank secret card. Did you did you increase your story points? Oh no, thank you. Yeah, so you get that up to eight. That's important. Yeah. All right. Um, and then now now that we've set the spotlight scene, are we now in the 
position for a threat? Uh, yeah, I think a threat because you, we could, you know, if we're making our way onto the campus, we probably are, are you know, kind of getting in view of, of the, <laughs> some of the lab buildings that uh, would be our yeah. destination. Uh, I know, I know it might not be maybe in the rules as, as written, but I, I don't mind giving someone else the <laughs> opportunity to choose choose a threat here if somebody wants to um i mean the 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 asymptomatic zombies uh we could run across some of them uh that, that are still able to re, re, they they retain more intelligence i think my, my idea was that that they would still have some some signs of being zombified but they they are more you know they're, they're not kind of fully uh automatons as we think of of most of them right that we have like some that are kind of walking around uh now are these these zombies do they like to eat people they like to are they like the brain eating kind like are they still gonna have this if they're asymptomatic are they still gonna have the the zombie drive to attack eat consume humans I mean, yeah, probably, right? Yeah, they, they probably are, are kind of wavering there. They, they, they yeah, but they I realize yeah, I they need to eat, but <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> yeah. yeah so, I think, I think we, that's great for it. So, we so, come across a group of them at a fire, and you know, they're making they're making dinner, and it's a pot of like brains, and there's like empty skulls on the on the side, but there's like brains in a pot. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean. Heard... I, I, I could imagine, yeah, coming up and thinking that they were, you know, that they were survivors somehow. That we see the, the yeah. the fire there, but but maybe they offer us to come and eat with them. Yeah, that they've invited us, and and we have been duped into this. But then we, it becomes apparent to us that yeah, that they are uh, not entirely what they initially appeared to us, uh, and so that that becomes our our threat then, um, and. Uh, with that being the case, uh, who's going to be the lead on the threat here? I'll take lead. Okay. So you get uh, one one white for being just into the mix, and somebody else gets to join the fray for free. Okay. So we got uh, Naomi jumping in. What are you planning to do here, Naomi? Uh, I follow Birdie to the ends of the earth, uh, so I think I'm just like peppering her with a bunch of questions, like, how did you, you know, you know, how do how do you know so much about this? Like, how how did you get to be in this position? Like, how how are you so smart? How are you so amazing? Uh, you know, it's really hard being a woman in engineering, and uh, you know, you've helped me out on this trip, and now I want to help you. Uh, and so I'm just like, put me in coach. What do you get that for me? Yeah, and, and I think um, I think uh, especially seeing that Dr. Buck is going to enter, and he's going to grab some of that mace as well. So I'll I'll spend the sport story point to enter the fray, and another uh, point uh, to to kind of outfit myself with some of that uh, zombie spray repellent, which I'm hoping is still effective against uh, of kind of these hybrid zombies that we're encountering now. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that Birdie probably is going to end up using something in her satchel. Um, so is that a touchstone? Is that what the touchstones are? Is that what you brought with you? Yeah. Yeah, you can use that as a uh, to, to gain one white die, just uh, okay, what do you have yeah. in there? Y your explosives? Um, so yeah, I've got my explosives um, and my hard candies in there. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. All right, so so that, that will come into play. And then, right, that just gets kind of marked off as something uh, that cannot be uh, used anymore. Okay in like battles right like i could still use it like throughout the story but right? yeah you can you, you can use it fictionally but it doesn't have any kind of mechanical weight anymore okay uh, yeah. um and then i have can i still use my roll um yes you can 
because like I can spend a story point to remove one black die. From right, a right. Because of your scientist knowledge. Um, yeah. That yeah, you you probably maybe have some insight having studied the the viral contagion as to uh, what's you know. Uh, so so can I maybe like add what that scientific knowledge is? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I think that in my studies, uh, I've come across some viral contagions. And normally, this zombie virus I've seen affects the uh, brain and the memory in particular. Mm -hmm. But I think that since these zombies seem to be mutated, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if the memories of these zombies are perhaps still partially intact, or at least they get impressions of their previous life, so that I think we might be able to play up their humanity side of things. Okay. Um, and, and I think I can justify using my left behind, my treasured antique book collection, where uh, when you talk about them having some type of humanity that's left behind, I mean, I, I some of my antique books kind of were these kind of uh, early accounts of, of kind of zombies, uh, you know, that, it, it, you know, some of these had kind of they were kind of crazy on one level just kind of legends but a lot of them had a kind of like little medical stuff that was folded into them because they were like from the middle you know from the from the renaissance or the kind of you know you know 16th century right some of these accounts so i'm going to go on and bring that into play as well I'll say Officer Frank kind of starts to grab a sword, but then sees Bertie Blythe with her explosives and kind of just puts his hand up and is like, ah, it looks like y'all got this, and uh, just kind of kind of backs up. Yeah, so we, we could, we have six white right now. Yeah, um, I think we might be good. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We want, you know, we want those sixes to be rolled. And I am kind of thinking that that like after this, we should probably just given the time that we'll probably just go to our event pool just to kind of see how that mechanic works a little bit. Okay. So if somebody wants to throw another white die in there, another one or two, that would be fine. Doc, uh, Frank really is just good at hurting people. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really have. Uh, I mean, That's been my experience of mall cops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're I, not. Frank is not currently in the fray at all, right? So I would have is to it? spend a story point to get in, and then a, another one to. Right, so, but when you get in, you also get a white die just for entering. Oh, then. just for entering. Yep. I mean, uh, sure. I'll I'll have uh, so I'll have Frank enter. So I spend a spend a point to get in, right? Right, and that gives us another die. And I'll, uh, I'll, um, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Birdie and say, uh, uh, you, you think, you think you have the, the power to stop this? You seem to know so much. Uh, you know, you, you really think that you're going to be able to talk some sense into these, uh, smart zombies over here? Oh, I, I certainly hope so. I mean, uh, I mean, you. But I would, maybe, I would, maybe you best come along. I, I, things have gotten out of hand before where I am concerned. Uh, look at this mess that I've made here. You've made? What do you mean you've made it? Uh, I think that, 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 uh, Dr. Birdie maybe looks off into the distance. Never you mind. It's too late. This is, you're telling me that all this is your fault? And I'm going to try to play on the Birdie Blythe fear of being unable to stop what she has begun. Okay. Uh, I'll say, well... And we got, we're going to have to deal with this, uh, talk about this a little bit more a little bit later. But right now, let's take care of these uh, smart zombies. Okay. Yeah, and I did make a mistake because I think I was trying to use one of my touchstones. I think you're only allowed to use your touchstone if you're the point person. So oh, okay. Birdie is able to do that. But that that's still, you've entered. So 
Um, so I, so I, do I burn a story point when I do that or, or no, I gain a story, I gain two. You right? gain two, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Laura, why don't you roll this for us? All right, cheers. Uh, how, how many are we rolling? Um, so we have, th I'm just gonna make sure we have three of us in the fray. You used uh, your uh, touchstone. We're using the the zombie spray. Um, There's a one? minus one black stones because. Oh uh, right, 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 right. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So that that's it. So that that they have two black, and I think um, I think we have five white. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, two black. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna drag these off to the side over here. Okay, and re-roll selected. So, so that. All okay, right. So, so they got they got a seven. Okay. Um, but see, what's gonna happen is that six is gonna go. Uh, that's not gonna figure into the total because that will get added to the event pool. Like whenever they roll oh, a six, okay. so they roll. They, that they they move it to the event pool, but then it doesn't count for the threat for them anymore. So um, that's very much a mixed bag. Uh, <laughs> well, it is a mixed bag, but it comes yeah. out. You know, for 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 fa facing the threat, it comes out good for us because it actually we reach that magic number of ten, right? We're ten over them, right? Uh, so right, they would get. Uh, let me just add it to their event pool. And that would take them to the six, right? And we would end up with three white. Um, yeah, so so we would it, it would all work. I mean, I think that what, what we have the the appeal to their humanity, I guess, uh, that we kind of used due to your to your knowledge, and um, you know that would kind of allow the group to kind of make it past uh, the zombies. Um, and what I can do just quickly, like uh, we didn't get up to the 12. If you want to make it a quicker game, and one of the things that 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 uh, I have found out when they when they give you like estimated times, that they're, they're you know the estimated times on these role playing games is often just like way out of uh, right because he he says yeah two to three hours, but you know we're we're coming up to three hours. I think we've moved fairly quickly along in terms of the setup that I had the kind of table set up and stuff like that uh, yeah, well, would, yeah. yeah we're not really role playing a lot of the like scenes and stuff too so no I, I think we're we're trying to move along kind of efficiently and and I so I would probably say it's more really a four hour game if you're gonna do through go through the two acts but just um just to give us a, a flavor of how the mechanics would work out at the end of an act. So, so what we do um, is you take the dice in the event pool and you roll them tallying up the total as normal. Uh, you set aside the dice in the event pool for use in act two so that they do kind of in a way get carried over and you know, for another mechanic that comes into play in act two. But, you know, you add up the white and the black dice, and then there's this consequences table. Uh, and I can uh, share this consequences table so that you can see it. Um, and copy. I'll put this into the chat. And thanks. All right, so that's the consequences table. So, um, Captain Jonathan, uh, why don't you do the honors here? So you would, uh, if we ended it here, we would roll six black dice and three white. Okay. Well, let me go. And then we would kind of consult the result of six that. Six black dice and three white? Yes. Um, do we want to, all right, so... I can delete all of them. I mean, we have six white dice and three black. Do we just want to switch the? Or you can just delete them all and just yeah, kind of okay. do the. Delete them all. Uh, delete selected, and we want three. Um, 
white dice, is that right? Yes. Three white dice. All right. Submit. Oh, I didn't clear. Uh, and then we want six black. That's not too bad for the white. I, I like that look. And then we want red, six red, right? Yeah. All right, submit. And then, okay. So we have 12 and they're 12 over us, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, so the, on the consequence table, the way that would read disaster strikes, and it's almost certainly your fault. We would lose two assets at random. All characters take one level of harm and uh, we would add an additional complication as well, okay. right? Uh, the, the, the game does stack the cards. I, I feel like actually with dealing with the threats, normally, uh, he says, normally you, you do not solve the threat in one round, which we did. That's the other thing that makes the, the kind of time frame kind of amazing to me is that, you know, moving through the threats, we kind of got our pools together and right, we, we did it. But uh, but normally it requires a few rolls to kind of get through that. And uh, yeah, but uh, but that would bring act one to an end. And then act two usually is a little bit shorter, but also the, the consequences are a little bit more dire. Uh, instead of rolling three black die for a threat on, in act two, they get five. Right. And, and really what it wants to do for Act 2 is really push the players to kind of in, invoking their death card. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and we I, we never sustained any harm either, right? That we, we kind of made it through without that. But I think it, it, it does uh, escalate, uh, you know. And I think a lot of people probably would play it a little more conservatively at the beginning and not try to kind of go in with quite as many dice as we did. In the yeah. second act, do you get to replenish those story point? Uh, the like all the things that we played, our fears, our secrets. You don't get to replenish those, so they're yeah. Okay. So yeah, in so the second act, you probably have a lot less resources to spend to ensure your victory, and hence trying. I see. Okay. Yeah, and, well, and the I'm death card harder in the second act too, right? Yeah. Well, the the threat level goes up to five. Uh, you start trying to use the 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 death cards like when you you know then there are three different ways to use your death cards like if you were going to die uh, you can you can play a death card to kind of basically uh, sneak out of that uh, but then you have to try to you have to try to die and uh, you know use your your death card uh, if you do the cheating death option. Or you can just say, okay, I'm going to sacrifice my character now because if you just outright uh, ch sacrifice your character, it generates three white dice for the group and adds two story points to them. So that they're like these big benefits that kind of come, in, that come into play at the end if you start to invoke uh, that stuff. Yeah, essentially, one death is worth every member <laughs> contributing an extra, like contributing something to a mission. Yeah. So, so by the end, there's just there's the last last person standing. Yeah, which would make it a you know conceptually that makes it a kind of interesting game for me because usually like you know you're you're kind of playing your character and you're you really don't want the character to die, but you know this one tries to kind of give you this oh, but there's this big payoff that you have at the end if you're willing to kind of sacrifice your character for the good of the group. Yeah, yeah. That's well, interesting because I've been playing a lot of trophy recently i don't know if any of you have played that but it also is trying to push you towards death uh and it's hard because death doesn't progress a story um and so you're acting in your best interests but the game wants you to not act in your best interests too so there's this like push and pull and this is an interesting way of manifesting that like the mechanical benefit is will you sacrifice something for the good of the group and at a certain point, that's all you have left mm -hmm. um, is is sacrificing one's own body because yeah. you've played all the other cards that you have at your disposal and and your your own life is all that's left to you. That's I think that that's a, a fun way of handling that. 
Yeah, because because with with trophy, and I played it a couple of times. Uh, you know, it, it is a grim ending, inevitably at the end of trophy. But but you know, not with the sense like this one. I think tries to kind of give you the sense though. Oh, but but there's some kind of greater purpose that is that is served by this that gives you some type of consolation. Whereas in in trophy, you don't really get that. <laughs> You don't get that consolation, uh, you know. You just, you know, kind of go to your your demise. And, and I, I like the game a lot, but but the, it, it is uh, rather unrelenting in terms of its uh, in terms of its tone. Yeah. Whereas this one, I think, kind of gives you the possibility that there's going to be some type of good outcome, at least in in the grand scheme of things. That that maybe you know you may have to make the personal sacrifices, but there will be some kind of uh, greater purpose that will. It will be served by it. Yeah, your death might mean something. Yeah, yeah. I, I cool. find it a, a kind of uh, interesting game. It has a lot of little pieces, though. I mean, it, it like just like I was spending like the past couple days just kind of, and it's not a really thick rule book, but there, and, and this is often I've found like with the Game Chef competitions that a lot of them kind of come up with these kind of like. Uh, kind of interesting games with lots of little like moving pieces, but it's a lot to take in, right? I mean, even like having done all that stuff, there was still some stuff where it's like, oh yeah, there's that special rule and right that type of thing. I don't know, like with with you know, to think about it with students, I th this one I think on the complexity level is probably too much, and then I I think also I don't know whether whether like younger students would be into that. I like the idea of sacrifice, and that's one that I, I talk about in my classes when we're talking about, uh, you know, tragic literature and things like that, a really important kind of concept. And this one, I think, has some something really good things to offer in terms of, of where it might push you to get to that idea of sacrifice. But, you know, the, the complexity level, I think, would, would be a, a kind of hurdle to overcome. For sure. And to me, yeah. it almost felt like there needed to be a maybe like a, a pseudo GM to to narrate some of the scenes as well. So like when we came up on the group of intelligent zombies or zombies that retain some of their stuff, like having somebody kind of role playing those zombies talking back and forth with the characters, I think would have yeah because it kind of built up, built up, built up, and then it was like okay, we rolled the dice and then we did it, but like mm -hmm. there wasn't a description of exactly. You know, there wasn't someone who had the role of like explaining how how, how did it all work out or I don't know. Yeah, because that's one of the things I really like about playing like Dungeons and Dragons and being one of the DMs is is yeah, is acting those things out. Yeah, and I and, and I think that really, if I was going to do this, I would probably uh, say it's a two session game, right? Sure. That I like act I would one, do act two kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, Act One, Act Two, or get near at least near the end of Act One because Act Two I think would be a little bit quicker, but oh, yeah. still I I think um, you know. Even I think if we played it for four hours, I think that would be pushing it. Um, and as I say, I think we were also kind of we were clipping along though, right? I mean, in terms no, of yeah. kind of working through things, yeah. But it's neat. It's a cool, think, it's a cool idea. I think that the the round based games because uh, when we played um, Follow the other week, similar like round based and. We weren't able to make it to that last act and i think part of that is just when you have four people at a table and everybody's trying to set up an interesting scene and then there's the mechanic on top of it uh mm -hmm. and you also want to role play it so that it is interesting and it's storytelling that's just a lot to add it's a lot to do so i think one of the ways that I, if you are going to bring this to the classroom and try to shorten it might be to say okay well there's only going to be two scenes per act or three scenes two scene one scene or something like that uh, as a way of like just reducing the narrative load in each section um, and maybe yeah. like making that that uh, that journey a little bit clearer so everybody knows okay well we started here and then we're gonna wind up here and then all of a sudden you know we'll, we'll be at the location that we need to be in um, but it is a resource management game like your the resource management is narrative yep that gives you dice uh, and so, yeah, and I, yeah. The, ki the kinds of resources that you can pull in is diverse. And the numbers, I think, really work well. Like, I think one of the things that uh, Mark Diaz Truman has done here is like, there's a really complicated negotiation of what these dice will do and how that's going to set up these various percentages. That's fun, but also yeah. 
harder to manage. Yeah, I agree. And, and I, I do find it really interesting, yeah, the way that it is resource management, but it's it's using the role playing to acquire resources that then get get deployed in the more slightly more tactical thing when you're actually encountering the threat. But yeah. Right. This is it's actually very similar to a mechanic for a role playing game that I played with my daughter. It's called Dinosaur Princess. Uh, and it's it's for especially designed for young people, uh -huh. and uh, you have you, you basically yeah you have the two pools of dice and you run into a problem and then each of the players you're the, like the adult is usually the paleontologist which is like the DM and then the kids are are dinosaur princesses that they've made up and yeah so you pit my dice as the paleontologists, I come up with problems, they come up with solutions with problems, and every solution they come up with, they get a dice, and then you just roll off, basically. So it's a it's a neat way, it's a way that I think could be scaled to different age, age levels. Yeah. Pretty, pretty neat. All right, well, I, I see that we're, we're coming up to the top of the hour, so I will kind of go on and, and cut it off here. But thank you all very much. Uh, I, I apologize. I kind of feel bad when the games don't get to the <laughs> right oh no the end. but uh, yeah. but at least i mean at least I, we got a little flavor i guess of of what the trajectory is and how that kind of end of act uh, kind of mechanic would work so